What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology and I am very excited for today's topic. It is a very much controversial topic, very much discussed, very much talked, always in the headlines in the astrological community. But unfortunately there is no clear answer and neither am I going to give any clear answer today because you don't need a clear answer to this question because this is not a question at all. Oh my God, so many confusions. <laughs> okay, so today's topic is Karak Bhavnash or they say Karako Bhavnashaya. <clears throat> so what is the meaning of that? Well, we shall discuss on what is Karako Bhavnash and why do they say that the Karako Bhavnash acts and why they say it doesn't act. Or should we see it like that in a binary scale that 1 or 0, it acts or it doesn't act. Alright, before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and <laughs> he will help you understand does Kargo Bhavna Shaya works or not. And if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed to it, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a personal consultation from me, then... Please approach me in the link with the license below. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the end, of course. <laughs> and share this with those people who are interested in knowing. Many people commented that they want me to make a video on this topic. So here you go. As your servant, I will fulfill whatever you desire. Okay, so what is Karako Bhavanasha? <coughs> Karako Bhavanasha simply states that karak means significator bhava is house and nashaya is destruction so what it means is <coughs> they say that if the significator of a house sits in that house itself then it destroys that house should I repeat? If the significator of any house sits in that house itself, then that house is destroyed. <laughs> well, before that, let's do some homework. Let's do some revision. Who are these significators? Ting Tong. If somebody can write in the comments. Who is the significator of the first house, second house, third house, fourth house, fifth house, sixth house, seventh house, eighth house, ninth house, tenth house, eleventh house, twelfth house? That's it. <laughs> <coughs> so these significators refer to the ones who are responsible for functioning of that house. All right. They are naturally the significators, irrespective of whichever place they are situated or whichever houses they are ruling. I have made a video on Karakas. If you have not watched it, then please go to my other playlist, Astrology Basics, and you can find it. It's in uh, top 10 videos of that playlist, I guess. I mean, from the bottom. So, who are the significators here of the houses? The first house. Who is the significator? Sun is the significator of the first house because sun shows vitality, body. Sun also shows goal and direction. And then who is the significator of the second house? Jupiter is the significator of the second house because that shows family. So it shows expansion. As I said in the earlier video on ether, this Jupiter has ether element, which is Akash, which means it always expands. So when you get married from one, you become two, then you have a child, then three, then another child, then four, <coughs> then they get married, then it multiplies, keeps multiplying, all right? And second house is also the house of value. So today you learn something that gets added. Tomorrow you learn something else that also gets added. That is why Jupiter always expands. The more you gain experience, the more your value system expands. Now, it's good or bad, that depends on what values you're putting in, all right? Now, who is the significator of the third house? Third house is signified by Mars because it is the house of siblings. That is why Mars is the Karaka for siblings. Who is the significator of the fourth house? Fourth house has many significators. <coughs> fourth house has moon as the primary significator for our inner happiness, comfort, <coughs> home, all these things. Then Venus is also the significator. Venus signifies luxuries, beauty, 
all these things and then moon venus also signifies the women in the home because a home is not a home without women <laughs> if there are no women in your home then that's a house actually that's not a home then mars is also the significator of the fourth house because it signifies land and property all these things the physical aspects of the home then you have the fifth house jupiter is the karka of the fifth house fifth house is the house of children creativity love romance all these things primarily it's the house of children that is why it is called the house of creativity because you create children yes then you have the sixth house which are signified by mars and saturn mars signifies the enemies here <coughs> and saturn signifies the struggles <laughs> sixth house is the house of struggles delays disappointments disputes all these are saturn and the fighting and the enemies and the quarrels all these are signified by the planet mars and then you have the seventh house seventh house has two significators for <coughs> men venus is the significator which is the spouse the wife and for women jupiter is the significator of the seventh house then you have eighth house longevity saturn is the significator then you have the ninth house ninth house has sun and jupiter as the primary significator sun signifies the father and jupiter signifies the gurus gods spirituality wisdom higher knowledge then you have <coughs> the 10th house primary significator of the 10th house is mercury then saturn sun are secondary significators some people also take jupiter to be significator of the 10th house all right and 11th house there is no doubt jupiter is the significator because jupiter will decide will your desires be fulfilled or not and then 12th house has the significator of saturn alone now what karaka bhavana shastra states is if the karaka of a particular house is sitting in that house then that house doesn't function or people say that that is the meaning of that statement but let's analyze for example they say that for a man if venus is situated in the 7th house then uh, it is not good for marriage his marriage will not last well first of all before giving blind statements like okay your marriage is not going to last please be very careful all right please do not give blank statements one planet doesn't decide even if you have the worst of the worst malefics it is not guaranteed that your marriage will not work and even if you have best of the best planets suppose you are a capricorn ascendant and you have an exalted jupiter there your marriage may still fall apart because jupiter is ruling the 12th house of separations it is sitting there so now you see now again this doesn't mean that if you are a capricorn ascendant and your jupiter is in exaltation in the 7th house that you will have separation in marriage no it doesn't mean that i'm just giving an example that blindly saying that benefics are good in the 7th malefics are good or bad or venus is bad in the 7th we need to be very careful when we make such statements okay the whole horoscope has to be seen but now this karako bhavana shastra rule states that if venus sits in the 7th house then it's not very good for the marriage it doesn't say the marriage will break <laughs> because as i said for that 10 other factors have to be seen but this says that it is not very good for the marriage now let us see why see the word astrology comes from the word astro and logic right so we should always apply logic there has to be logic of course we cannot apply logic to each and everything that we know within astrology that's not possible because in kaliyuga as the shrimad bhagavatam says manda sumanda matayo it means people are foolish they are dumb and they are ignorant and their memory is very less and their intellectual capacities are very low so you cannot uh, find logic in everything in astrology also but we should try our best to find logic so now you think what venus represents and what seventh house represents both represent the same thing so seventh house is originally the house of sexuality and venus also is the karaka for sexuality so when you are putting a planet which is a rajasic planet rajas the tatva of venus is rajas all right which means it is a very passionate planet it wants to enjoy only and when you put that in the seventh house which is also the house of desire and sexuality it becomes like a 
blast <laughs> it's like you are blasting two bombs simultaneously so the blast is much bigger so what it means that whenever venus sits in the seventh house then the aspect of pleasure which is denoted by venus is opened by the seventh house of sexuality that means these people can be too much sexual i'm not saying they will be the other things are there in the horoscope so now somebody will write in the comments i have venus in the seventh house i am not like that you are wrong you are an idiot i didn't say that you are sexual i am saying these are indications all right for that you have to see so many other things but i'm just giving some blind thumb rules here so that you can start all right otherwise you will never be able to learn astrology if you just keep saying okay my rahu is in seventh the other day somebody was telling me okay you said in one video rahu in the seventh will uh, you will cheat others but i have not cheated anybody i never said that <laughs> i just said that is one of the indications you have to check where sun where moon and lot of the ascendant is placed all these things have to be seen so i never give blind statements all right <clears throat> so now when venus sits in the seventh house it simply means that the aspect of pleasure of his life he always turns to sexuality and as lord krishna says in the gita kama esha krodha esha rajo guna samudbhava mahashano mahapapma vidhe namaha vairinam arjuna asks lord krishna oh my dear lord krishna what is the greatest enemy of the mankind <laughs> he doesn't ask this he asks what is it that forces a man who is trying to control his senses to do wrong activities so then lord krishna says kama esha krodha esha that it is lust only arjuna which is a the most dreaded enemy of mankind so what happens these people will have a tendency if provided other combinations in the chart are supporting that they are too much lusty which simply means in this day and age of kali yuga that they will not be uh, sexually satisfied with one person they will so in, as soon as they find okay now the romance and the passion is over in this marriage they will be like okay i have to go to somebody else <laughs> if the other combinations are supporting especially if moon is with rahu or the lord of the ascendant is smashed very badly <laughs> if all these things are there then the person may cheat also cheat doesn't mean that he wants to cheat but that is some kind of a need which he can't let go of all right that is why it is called karako bhavana sha that it is not very good and it's pretty logical also now take the another example this is very famous they say jupiter in the fifth house will deny you children <laughs> now let's try to analyze what jupiter is jupiter is the significator of happiness how much happy you are in life how much contented fulfilled you are in life how much are you away from rahu addictions drugs alcohol pornography prostitution anything that will take you away from spiritual uh, inquisitiveness those things are represented by rahu so how much are you away from those things how much can you stay without rahu can you stay for a week without seeing a movie if you can't then your jupiter is spoiled <laughs> okay now somebody will write oh my god i can stay for a month i don't know if jupiter is good or bad in your chart but what i am saying is jupiter represents all those things which help us achieve higher fulfillment and within the varna ashram system in the grihastha ashram which is the ashram of marriage having children is a very integral part of the of that life because otherwise they say that putra hinam griham shunyam a house which does not have children is not a house or maybe it's not a home it's a house all right that is what scriptures say okay now somebody will write in the comments no no it's my free will i will keep uh, i will not have children well you can do whatever you want i am just quoting the scriptures so now and what is the fifth house fifth house itself is the uh, house which represents children so now you are putting it's like again overdose <laughs> you are putting jupiter which is supposed to give you that level of fulfillment in the fifth house of children all right so what happens is with this you will see there is too much expectation from children and because of that they may feel choked 
oh my father wants me to be an IAS officer my father wants me to be a doctor well that may be there in a country in the common households especially in country like India but when I say this that it gives you a lot of expectations then I mean it's sky high expectations and also the person has a lot of desire to gain pleasure from children so these people if Jupiter is badly placed there then their expectations will not be met in the future what I have seen Jupiter in the fifth house this does not mean that you will not have children similarly son in the ninth house is an epic example they say it's not good for the father why it is not good because see ninth house itself is the house of father and son is the Karaka for father but son is a very hot planet hot doesn't mean it's physically hot <laughs> physically it hot it is hot it burns the entire universe but when I say it's very hot it means that there's a lot of ego there wherever son is sitting so when son sits in the ninth house ninth house itself is the house of father and ninth house itself is a very strong house it is a very rigid and the house of rules and regulations and then you are putting son there rigidity over that so these people I have seen their fathers are extremely strict and anything you do they will rip you apart completely <laughs> and that is why you will always run into ego battles with the father all right you will always feel that oh my father tries to dominate me if i say i will do engineering he will say no no do medical if i say i will become a doctor he will say no no become a um, is officer he will he will say oh don't do this do this what i am saying if i say go to go to uh, kullu manali he will say no 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 go to west bengal and have rasgulla all right so this is how karko bhavan ashaya behaves now what i have seen this is the second thing which i will tell this was the first thing the first part was regarding why actually it is called karko bhavanash all right the second thing is when i have seen karko bhavanasha actually working means actually when the destruction happening there when the karaka is getting destroyed or when the house is getting destroyed is the same thing when i have seen it happening is suppose that karaka in two cases i have seen is afflicted by a very terrible malefic should i repeat let me give you an example suppose you are a capricorn ascendant <laughs> i don't know why i'm taking capricorn ascendant today whatever god wills okay so suppose you're a capricorn ascendant and you have venus placed in the fifth house oh not venus let me take uh, jupiter placed in the seventh house all right jupiter is exalted in the sign of cancer because for capricorn seventh house is the house of cancer okay so jupiter gets exalted in cancer but suppose you have saturn in the lagna or you have rahu or ketu with jupiter or aspecting jupiter okay in that case you may inquire you may encounter troubles in marriage now the question is why see because first of all whenever a malefic is aspecting the seventh house it will hamper the seventh house first of all then the karaka of the seventh house for women jupiter is also sitting there that means it is hampering the karaka also it's like a double blow so now you don't have protection <laughs> Had Jupiter been placed in another house, then at least the seventh house would be aspected and Jupiter uh, would be free at least. But here it's not happening. Here the Karaka and the house is getting smashed very badly uh, to the degree of uh, the affliction. Maybe there's one malefic aspecting, maybe there are 10 malefics who are aspecting. All right. So in that case, similarly take the example of Venus. Suppose you are a uh, Aries ascendant <laughs> and you have Venus placed in the seventh house in the sign of Libra <laughs> because for Aries seventh house is Libra itself and suppose you have Saturn placed in the tenth house and you have Mars placed in the fourth house difficult combination so then what happens Saturn with its tenth aspect will aspect the seventh house all right so it is giving you delays disappointments regarding the seventh house which is first partner first 
marriage. Then Mars is in the fourth house. From there, with its fourth aspect, it is hitting the seventh house. That means quarrels, fights, anger, jealousy, frustration. All these things are coming into the seventh house. Mars will try to impact the seventh house that way. So now, not only the seventh house is getting affected, Venus also is getting affected. So now it's like double blow. The Karaka is also gone and the seventh house is also getting afflicted. When I say the Karaka is gone, it doesn't mean you'll have a divorce. I'm saying that they are getting influenced in a negative way. So in that case, I have seen Karako Bhavanasha actually working. So for example, if Aries Ascendant has Mars in the 4th and Saturn in the 10th and Venus in the 7th, then I have seen difficulties with marriage. This is one example I'm giving. There are so many other examples which I can give. Take the example of Saturn in the 12th house and Sun in the 9th house. So then Saturn from the 12th house with its 10th aspect aspects the 9th house. So it is aspecting the 9th house of father and also it is aspecting son. So now your father will likely have serious issues. I have seen uh, one example like this. One of my friend, not friend, kind of an acquaintance. His father was a severe victim of depression because Saturn is aspecting the ninth house. Ninth house is the head of the father. So when Saturn aspects the head, Saturn says, you are not good enough. So you are a victim of inferiority complex. When Saturn aspects the lagna being placed in a bad dignity, for example, if Saturn would be in the 12th house in Libra, in exaltation, and there it would aspect the 9th house, then it would be a different story. But this person, my friend, he was a Capricorn ascendant. And for Capricorn, Saturn in the 12th house is in the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is not a very great placement for Saturn. Because saturn wants to do it doesn't want to believe <laughs> sagittarius says no no don't don't do much just believe in the higher power so saturn doesn't like that sign it's not that it hates because jupiter is a neutral planet to saturn jupiter is not an enemy to saturn but it's not a very great friend also so then what happens when saturn is not very happy from there when it is aspecting the ninth house the sign of Virgo. And if your son is also placed there, then it will affect. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. I just got a parcel. All right. So what I was telling is if Saturn sits in the 12th house for a Capricorn ascendant as an example, and because it's not very happy there in Sagittarius from there with its 10th aspect aspects, the sign of Virgo, where is your ninth house for a Capricorn? And then your son is also there. Then it's like a double blow. That is why the father of this person of my friend he had uh, suffered from depression and it took a long time to cure and now fortunately he is well so that is one uh, consideration which i have seen karako bhaul nasha working if the significator sits in that house and it is afflicted then it is like confirmed now you may say that okay some planet will always aspect Mars has three aspects, Saturn has three aspects, Rahu has three aspects, Saturn, uh, Ketu has three aspects. Well, that's the predicament of this material world, you see. <laughs> you cannot say that, okay, my seventh house is free from affliction, but then your Venus will be afflicted or your Jupiter will be afflicted or seventh house may have malefics placed. So everybody, every house, every Karaka will undergo some difficulty, some trial, some tribulation in his or her life. That is unavoidable. But we have to see to what extent is that happening. So, For example, if for this Capricorn Ascendant, if Mars would also be placed in the third house, in the sign of Pisces, and then also it would aspect the sun, it would be much more difficult. It would have been much more worse. But in this case, only Saturn was aspecting the sun and also the ninth house. So it was under control that this father of this uh, native, he recovered. All right. Otherwise, if other planets would also aspect, then it would be very bad. Okay. Now, the third consideration which I am telling you is very important. What I have seen is Kargo Bhavanasha working. In another case also, suppose the Karaka sits in a particular house which it signifies, but is ruling a Dusthana. Should I repeat? 
is ruling a dustana house then this will give results because wherever the lords of the dustanas will sit they will cause some harm some pain some difficulty some misery there so let me give you an example if suppose somebody is a libra ascendant so there jupiter becomes the sixth lord so now because the sign of uh, pisces is in the sixth house for libra ascendant right so then now if jupiter sits in the fifth house so it's like sixth lord going to the fifth house in that case this will work this will work doesn't mean you will not have children <laughs> it means that there will be there will be a bickerness there will be a bitterness you will have a, a what you say na love and hate relationship in hindi they say na chatis ka akda because sixth lord wherever placed it will show uh, struggles in that area if sixth lord is placed in the ninth house i have seen these people don't get along with their father or they have problems with their gurus the guru will tell them do this if you want to advance they will go and say no 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 we think this is better that is better <laughs> depending on other combinations of course so now jupiter is the karaka of the fifth house it is sitting there but now it is also the sixth lord it is taking the flavors of that house so now jupiter will definitely try to damage the fifth house not because it is jupiter not because it is the significator or karaka of the fifth house not because of that because it is the sixth lord so whenever you say karako bhavana sha works or it doesn't work uh, be very careful just check so for example in the same line i would say if uh, a scorpio ascendant has venus in the seventh house it is not very conducive for marriage even though venus is placed there in own sign can you tell me the reason why <laughs> no 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 okay that is true that it will cause too much sexuality and running behind other uh, partners of the opposite sex that's true but here that is not only the case here venus also rules the 12th house do you understand here do you understand how this is working actually so whenever venus is causing trouble in the 7th house if at all it is causing trouble it may not be only because it is sitting there in the 7th house and it is destroying that house the sexuality's aspect will be there irrespective of what venus is ruling but here i am saying for scorpio ascendant if venus is sitting there it is also bringing flavors of the 12th house which means wherever 12th lord sits you will have a tendency to develop escapism in that area so when the 12th lord itself is a rajasic planet it is sitting in the house of rajas and that too in own sign that means it is very strong there it's forming one of the mahapurush yogas which is known as malavya mahapurush yoga when venus is placed in the kendra in own mool trikon or exaltation that means the person will have royal escapisms <laughs> and when how what will be the nature of the escapism sexuality will be the nature of escapism okay suppose this person is not happy in his career oh he will go and uh, indulge in sexuality either he will go and watch pornography or he will go and visit a prostitute or if he is married he may go and enjoy with his wife or he may go to some other person <laughs> so now you understand scorpio ascendant venus in the 7th house why it is causing problem not because uh it is uh, having karako bhavanash it is ha having that but now additionally it has another uh predicament that it is also the 12th lord there you see this is how you study karako bhavanash okay so the three factors to be considered is first factor is it becomes a bit of too much <laughs> jupiter in the fifth house too much happiness too much expectation from children and then bang they don't fulfill it venus in the 7 too much after sexuality it's gone rampant these people you will see venus in the 7th or even if it's in the 5th house you will see them they cannot stay without the opposite sex they cannot stay without the validation i have seen unless other combinations are not uh, i mean if the other combinations are very good then this may not be the case i have seen some exceptions also but in general i have seen venus even if it is ruling the 7th house or the 5th house these people or sitting there fifth or seventh these people they are 24 hours consumed only by the opposite sex 
nothing else is visible to them <laughs> but so that's the reason first thing it's like too much of something sun in the ninth house too much of ego there and the second consideration is if that planet is placed there the karaka is placed in that house and if it is afflicted then it's like double blow now nobody is there to save you so that is why they say karak bhavanas and the third consideration is if that karaka in that horoscope is ruling a dusthana then it will bring those flavors to that house also and therefore you say karako bhavanas so now what's the conclusion the conclusion is not that it is bad to have that planet sitting there or is it good to have it away from there that's not the point here the point here is whenever you make a prediction that this is good or bad check the whole horoscope just because venus is sitting in the seventh house it doesn't mean that the person will always uh, run behind the opposite sex it's not <laughs> the case always okay but that is a very strong factor and if other combinations are supporting it will happen there's no doubt on it similarly if uh, mars is situated in the sixth house or mars is in the third house so too much courage with brothers that leads to fights too much fighting oh my god the planet of fighting in the house of fighting sixth house you will always be surrounded by enemies 24 hours so that's what happens when mars sits in the seventh house oh uh, sorry the sixth house there you go that is it from my side three considerations for karako bhavana shaya to work or to not work or to consider it or not to consider it there you go i hope you understood what is karako bhavana and does it work or why at all it works or should it work or should we use it or should we not use it okay there you go thank you very much for watching it till the end my god it's very long i have to join the two videos and if you are new to the channel and if you have not subscribed to it yet then please subscribe to it <laughs> and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and share it with those people who are confused about karako bhavana sha does it work or does it not work all right and if you want a personal consultation from me then approach me in my website vedic renaissance and mail me accordingly okay until next time wish you good luck with your venus in the 7th jupiter in the 5th mars in the 6th and sun in the 9th house <laughs> until next time wish you good luck bye bye see you